buongiorno, good morning, ciao cari. Giovanni Barbellinardo Lombardi was born in Toronto on December the 4th, 1915, in a tenement house on Trinity Square, to poor Italian immigrant parents. All the while, World War I was raging in Europe. His parents, Leonardo and Teresa, immigrated from Italy hoping for a better life, but encountered poverty. Unemployed, destitute, and desperate, when they couldn't pay their rent, they were forced to move many, many times before finally settling in the College Street area. Johnny loved music as a child. During the late 20s, at the age of 10, he taught himself to play the harmonica, the bugle, and the trumpet. His musical studies paid off, and he joined the Boys K Club and Columbus Boys Club, which were service clubs for underprivileged children. From a young age, Johnny was driven by his poverty. He wanted to help his family and earn money to pay for food. During the Great Depression, he shined shoes and folded newspapers for La Tribuna Italo Canadese, he also earned money by lighting gas lights, burners, and stoves for his Jewish neighbors and friends during Shabbat. In his early 20s, Johnny formed his own band, the Johnny Lombardi Orchestra. In the late 30s, Johnny left Toronto joining Benny Palmer's band in London, Ontario, and he was the first trumpet player of this renowned orchestra. He continued to send money home to his family. In 1942, like many of the other men of the day, Johnny enlisted in the Canadian Armed Forces and left Canada to help with the war effort. Johnny was stationed in France, Holland, Belgium, and Germany. He was promoted to sergeant and commissioned to organize shows for the troops. Johnny took part in the Allied invasion of Normandy, and unbeknown to him at the time, he would keep the troop spirits up by playing his trumpet. At the end of the war, he was stationed in Zutphen, Holland, and continued to provide entertainment for the troops waiting to go home. He was one of the last Canadians to leave Europe in 1946. Arriving back in Canada, Johnny discovered that most of the jobs that were offered to returning soldiers were filled. So Johnny started a grocery business. He realized that the vast number of Italian immigrants that settled in Toronto were looking for specialty Italian products. He achieved success by appealing to the needs of this city's rapidly growing Italian immigrant neighbors. His first store was located at Dundas and Manning, and then Clinton and College. And finally, in 1952, he moved his store to the iconic 637 College Street location. Lombardi's Italian Foods on College Street became a place for newcomers to find more than just products. Lombardi's was a place you could get practical advice, and the family helped many Italians settle into their new life in Canada. With the Italians flocking to College Street to shop and settle, it began to emerge as a little Italy. Eventually, it was officially recognized as Toronto's Little Italy. Johnny realized that he needed to promote his store and products, so he started to produce radio programs by brokering time on Chum Radio. Johnny's impresario career started in the early 50s with Italian singers he brought in direct from Italy for concerts at Massey Hall, Maple Leaf Gardens, Roy Thompson Hall, and many others. The concerts were always a seller. In the early 60s, Johnny turned his never-ending energy and commitment to new immigrants 
those coming to Toronto from European lands to make their new home in Canada. He realized that there was a growing need for more radio programs and that Multicultural Toronto needed its own multicultural radio station. Johnny's interest in producing radio shows led him to seek a license for a radio station of his own. Johnny applied for a multicultural radio station at a time when others did not believe that it would be viable. But Johnny persevered, and after a difficult and lengthy process, he was granted license, and a vital Toronto institution was launched, Shin Radio, opening its studios and offices above his supermarket in 1966 at 637 College Street. Nineteen sixty six was also the year that Johnny created the Chin International Picnic. Johnny wanted to bring together all the communities that his radio station served. It became one of the city's largest and diverse annual celebrations, drawing as many as two hundred and fifty thousand people attending, making it the world's largest free picnic. In the 1970s, Johnny emerged as one of the first promoters of multiculturalism, long before it became a key policy of the Canadian government under Prime Minister Trudeau. In the early 1970s, he also expanded into multicultural television. Johnny always believed in giving back to the community. With his radio and television programs thriving, Johnny devoted his programs and time to raise funds for various causes. In 1987, he received the Order of Ontario, and in 1988, the Order of Canada. In 1996, on Johnny's 81st birthday, Toronto Mayor Barbara Hall paid Johnny a very special tribute. The City of Toronto officially declared the section of College Street between Grace and Clinton Street as Johnny Lombardi Way paying tribute to the man who contributed so much, not only to College Street, but to the many newcomers to Canada. In the fall of 2001, Johnny and his son Lenny applied for and received CRTC approval for their first full-service multicultural and multilingual radio station, CJLL in the nation's capital, serving Ottawa and the Gatineau regions. On March 18, 2002, Johnny passed away, leaving a lasting legacy for future generations. He touched the lives of so many. He was a friend to all who knew him, a mentor for new Canadians and a pillar of strength for the community. He believed in family, friendship, and community. His dream of broadcasting was far-reaching, touching the lives of millions of people across Canada. Johnny's Chin Radio would define multiculturalism and help shape a nation. You can find Chin Radio's DNA in all multicultural broadcasting throughout Canada. All this from the humble beginnings of a son born to a poor immigrant family from Italy. In the summer of 2004, Mayor Mel Laspin and Deputy Mayor Joe Pantalone spearheaded an effort that joined local businesses and the Lombardi family to create Piazza Johnny Lombardi as a memorial to his life and work. The piazza is located at College and Grace, where Johnny lived and worked. The curved seating walls recall the ocean and radio waves that brought Johnny together with the diverse cultures he celebrated. At the heart of the piazza is a bronze statue of Johnny, engaged and full of life. He is having a conversation with the statue of a young boy, wearing Johnny's signature baseball cap. By drawing continents, nations and peoples together with one continuous line of his etching tool, the boy describes Johnny's inspiring vision of a multicultural Canada. In December 2007, the biography 
Johnny Lombardi, the great communicator, made its world television premiere. Funded by Rogers Communication and produced by Johnny's daughter-in-law, Grace, and narrated by his children, Lenny and Teresa, the award-winning biography is an insight to the man who pioneered multicultural broadcasting in Canada and features over 35 interviews with broadcast industry leaders, politicians, friends and family. Johnny's legacy continues on through his son and daughter. They continue to believe in their father's vision. Johnny's pioneering spirit lives on in Lenny and Teresa, who are equally passionate about promoting and celebrating multiculturalism. The picnic comes home to Little Italy as a tribute to the centennial year milestone of Johnny Lombardi. Bringing the Chin Picnic, his beloved and iconic multicultural event to College Street, the place where Chin Radio was born, celebrates all that is wonderful about our culturally diverse city and a fitting tribute to the man who loved this neighborhood. Johnny's life spanned many careers, including musician, soldier, grocer, impresario, and broadcaster, all of which influenced and shaped him into an outstanding communicator to the people of many and varied walks of life and cultures that he served. Johnny knew what it was like to be poor. He knew what it was like through his parents to be an immigrant and the solitude and segregation that comes from being a newcomer. Johnny was able to find his unique way through his multicultural radio station to speak to them and to let them know that they were not alone. Thanks to Johnny, the voice of cultural diversity resonates loud and clear in multicultural Canada. <laughs>